Namaskar, a warm welcome to World News and Indian Perspective on All India Radio. This is Manoj Singh Rana bringing glimpses of major developments of the day from across the globe. The headlines. Prime Minister of India Narendra Modi to address Global Climate Summit tomorrow on 5th anniversary of Paris Climate Agreement. India and Myanmar agree to share intelligence information to control drug trafficking. Strong possibility of no post-Brexit trade deal with the EU, says PM Boris Johnson. S&P Dow Jones removes Chinese companies from index after US executive order. Morocco becomes latest Arab country to normalize relations with Israel. And French footballer Griezmann cut commercial ties with Huawei Technologies, citing China's surveillance of Uyghurs. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will address the Global Climate Summit tomorrow on the fifth anniversary of the landmark Paris Climate Agreement. The agreement is a landmark in the multilateral climate change process. The Paris Agreement is a legally binding international treaty adopted by 196 parties at COP21 in Paris on the 12th December 2015 and entered into force on the 4th November 2016. Its goal is to limit global warming to well below 2, preferably to 1.5 degrees Celsius compared to pre-industrial levels. Briefing the media in New Delhi on the eve of completion of five years of the Paris Agreement, Environment Minister Prakash Javrikar has said, that the climate change is not an overnight phenomenon and it has taken the last 100 years to have an impact on the environment. In Paris Agreement, we had the manjur that our emission intensity of GDP will be reduced by 33 to 35 percent. This was a huge commitment and I am happy to say that we have already achieved 21 percent. So remaining 12-13 percent will achieve in next 10 years. The minister has said that India is one of the few countries which are Paris Agreement compliant. He said, according to the Climate Transparency Report 2020, India is the only G20 country to meet its commitments under the Paris Agreement. The fifth India-Myanmar bilateral meeting on drug control cooperation between the Narcotics Control Bureau India and the Central Committee on Drug Abuse Control Myanmar was held virtually yesterday. Both countries agreed on the exchange of intelligence information in a timely manner to conduct follow-up investigations in drug seizure cases, new psychotropic substances and their precursors. The Commander Drug Enforcement Division of Myanmar complimented the Government of India for its continuous efforts to combat the growing threat of the drug menace in the region. The International Bharti Festival is being held in honour of the national poet Mahakavi Subramanya Bharati, whose 138th birth anniversary is being celebrated today. While addressing the event via video conference this evening, Prime Minister of India Narendra Modi said, Governments that women-led empowerment policies are tribute to the vision of Subramanya Bharati. Prime Minister said that Bharti teaches us to remain united and committed to the empowerment of every single individual, especially the poor and marginalized. He said Subramanya Bharti was connected with his roots while looking at the future. Mr. Modi said he emphasized that we need to develop a scientific temper and not live in the past. He sang songs of the great days of ancient India, the great days of Vedas and Upanishads. Our culture, tradition, and our glorious past. But at the same time, he also warned us that simply living in the past glory is not enough. We need to develop a scientific temper, a spirit of inquiry, and much towards progress. In the function, Prime Minister Narendra Modi conferred this year's Bharti Award to the noted writer Sini Vishwanath. Prime Minister of India Narendra Modi and President of Uzbekistan Shavkat Mirziyoyev today held a virtual summit. The leaders discussed the entire spectrum of bilateral relationship including strengthening of India-Uzbekistan cooperation in the post-COVID world. They also exchanged views on regional and global issues of mutual interest. President of Uzbekistan Shavkat Mirziyoyev thanked India for its support during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
India today said Chinese action along the line of actual control, LAC, in the last six months is in violation of the bilateral agreements and protocols ensuring peace and tranquility. External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Anurag Srivastava said the situation which has been witnessed since the last six months is a result of actions by Chinese side which are sought to effect a unilateral change in the status along the LAC in eastern Ladakh. These actions are in violation of the bilateral agreements and protocols on ensuring peace and tranquility along the LAC in the India-China border areas. Both sides need to strictly follow the various bilateral agreements and protocols in their entirety, including the 1993 and 1996 agreement on maintenance of peace and tranquility along the LAC in the border areas, which require that there should not be amassing of troops. Each side should strictly abide by and respect the LAC and should not take any unilateral action to alter it. We have taken note of the Chinese side's statement that it observes strictly the agreements between the two sides and is committed to resolving the border issue through dialogue and safeguarding peace and tranquility in the border areas. We expect the Chinese side will match words with actions. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has said that there is a strong possibility that the UK would fail to strike a post-Brexit trade deal with the EU. Weeks of intensive talks between the EU and the UK have failed to overcome obstacles in key areas, including competition rules and fishing rides. Meanwhile, travellers from the UK could be banned from entering the European Union from January 1st under current coronavirus restrictions. The current Brexit transition period ends on December 31st and these travel restrictions will still apply even if the UK and the EU strike a trade deal. This is All India Radio giving you the world news. S&P Dow Jones Indices said on Thursday that it would remove some Chinese companies from indices used to track market performance following a U.S. government ban on Americans investing in their stocks and bonds. The Chinese government opposed the move as politically motivated. The announcement follows President Donald Trump's November 13th order barring Americans from buying stocks and bonds issued by companies deemed to be linked to China's military. Morocco has become the latest Arab country to agree to normalize relations with Israel in a deal brokered with the U.S.'s help. Under the agreement, Morocco will establish full diplomatic relations and resume official contacts with Israel, grant overflights and also direct flights to and from Israel for all Israelis. Morocco is the fourth Arab country since August to strike a deal aimed at normalizing relations with Israel after the UAE, Bahrain and Sudan. And now the coronavirus updates from around the world. French Prime Minister Jean Chastet has said that it will not reopen museums, cinemas and theatres next week as planned because COVID-19 infection rates are not falling in the country as they'd expected. India crossed another significant milestone in its fight against COVID as the active caseload in the country today further decreased to stand at 3.71%. On to sports now, French and Barcelona footballer Antonio Griezmann has cut commercial ties with the Huawei Technologies Co. Limited. Griezmann cited reports that the Chinese telecom giant was involved in the surveillance of Uyghur Muslims. External Affairs Minister of India Dr. S. J. Shankar today congratulated the government and people of Burkina Faso on their National Day. In his tweet, Dr. J. Shankar expressed hope that both countries will continue to work together to further strengthen their bonds of close friendship and cooperation. India is celebrating the 151st birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. Before we end, let us listen to his favorite bhajan, Vaishnav Jan, by artists from Burkina Faso. <laughs> And with that, we end this bulletin. See you at the same time tomorrow with the next edition of World News. 